sixth grade, module six, lesson 10, problem set. Number one, draw a dot plot of the times that five students studied for a test if the mean time they studied was two hours and the mad was zero hours. Okay, so we know that there are five students and the mean time is two hours and the mad is zero hours. So we know that the average time was two hours but what really stands out to me is that the MAD, meaning the um, mean absolute deviation, was zero. So that means that there's no variability whatsoever in this set of data points. So that tells me if it's the MAD is zero, there is no variability, which means everything is the same. And if the mean is two hours, that means that everyone, all five of them, were two hours. So our dot plot is just going to have five dots at two hours. So let's draw that. I'm going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to have 5 at 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we just need to label it. So let's call it studying. And then our, it was in time in hours. So that's like two, five different students at two studied for two hours. Number two, suppose the times that the five students studied for a test are as follows. So we have someone, Aria, at one and a half, Ben is two, Chloe's two, Dylan's two and a half, and Emma's two. Michelle said that the MAD for this data set is zero hours because the dot plot is balanced around two. Without doing any calculations, do you agree with Michelle why or why not? Um, so, like we said before in the last one, when the MAD was zero, um, that was because they were all the same. They were all the same exact data point. So the only way for this to have a MAD of zero is if all of these were the exact same, and they are not. So I disagree with Michelle. So let's say no, no, um, Make that a little thinner. No, um, there's no, Michelle is wrong. Let's say there is no variability. So, oh, wait, sorry, there is variability. Now there is no variability. There is variability. So the MAD could not be be zero. It would have to be greater than zero. All right, number three. Suppose that the number of text messages eight students receive on a typical day is as follows. So there are eight students and they all get um, between let's see, 42 and 70 text messages per day. Draw a dot plot of the number of text messages received on a typical day for these eight students. So we found that the low was 42, the high was 70. So let's go ahead and draw our dot plot. And I'll go from 40 and count by fives. 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. All right, so we have a 42. That'll be like about right there. A, oh, guys, I missed it. Our low is actually 35. That's fine. Just make a 35 right there. Okay, 56. We already did the 35, 70, 56, so another 56, 50, 65, and another 50. All right. Make sure we have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, we got them all plotted. And then let's give it a title. Okay, so let's say title text messages received, we could say. Let's say 
text received in a day. And go ahead and label it number of texts. Okay. So we got the dot plot. Find the mean number of text messages these eight students receive on a typical day. So to find the mean, we add them all together, and then we divide by how many there are. So um, B. So the mean, we would find it by adding them all together. So 42 plus 56 plus 35 plus 70 plus 56 plus 50 plus 65 plus 50 all divided by 8 because there are 8 numbers there or 8 students. Let's I'm going to use calculator to do that. All right, so we had 42 plus 56 oh 56 plus 35 plus 70 plus 56 plus 50 plus 65 and one more 50. And we are going to divide that by 8, 8 students, we get 53. So the at mean is 53. That is equal to 53. C, find the MAD for the number of text messages and explain its meaning using the words of this problem. So to find the MAD, I'm going to go up here and find, I'm going to just expand this a little bit. I think that's the easiest way to look at it. And we're going to see how far away each of these are from the mean 53. So let's say, let's see, 11, or sorry. 42 is 11 away from 53, 56 is 3 away, 35 is 18 away, 17 away, let's, let's double check. We would hate to make a mistake and then get the answer wrong because we got the math problem wrong. 13 minus 5 is 8, yep, yeah, 18 away, but better to check than get it wrong. 70 is how many from 53? 17. 56 is 3 away from 53. 50 is 3 away from 53. 65 is 12 away. And 50 is 3 away. So to find the MAD, we're going to add all of these together and then divide by 8 again. So this is for letter C. All right, so 11 plus 3, I'm just going to do this in my head, or not in my head, but work it out. 11 plus 3 is 14, 14 plus 18 gives us, let's see, 12, 32 plus 17 is 49 plus these two. So let's just do that side. So this side... That's 49. Now let's do this. 3 plus 3. I'm going to add 3 and 3 and 3. That's 9. 9 plus 12 is 21. So let's do 49 plus that side is 21. Of course, if you just wanted to use a calculator, you could do that too. 70. So they're all equal to 70. And now let's do 70 divided by 8. All right, I'll go to my calculator for that. Look, 8 and 75 hundredths is the mad. Find the MAD and explain the number of text messages using its meaning. So let's explain that 
this means. Here, I'll go down here to see. Seven five. This means on average the number of texts received differs by eight and seventy five hundredths texts from the mean of 63. So on average, a student will be um, about eight and 75 hundredths away from 63. Okay, sorry, they don't give you room to solve these problems and I, I will never understand that. So sorry, all the problems are kind of everywhere. Describe the shape of this distribution. Okay, so let's look at it here. So if the mean here is 53, about that. So I would say the shape is fairly symmetrical. Like we start over here, you know, it's pretty symmetrical um, and balanced around 53. We have about the same on either side of 53. There's four over here and four over here. So it's a pretty symmetrical looking dot plot. Let's just say, um, fairly symmetrical around the mean of 53. And E, suppose that in the original data set, student 3 receives an additional 5 text messages per day, and student 4 receives 5 fewer text messages per day. So student 3 got 5, so instead of 35, let's find a new color here. Let's do rainbow. Instead of 35, they got 40, and instead of student 4, they got 5 fewer. So student 4 instead got 65. Okay, so since we added 5 and took away 5, what's going to happen is the mean is going to stay the same because all we did was kind of balance what we did by adding 5 and then we negated it by subtracting 5. So everything is going to stay the same. So let's say for, let's go all the way up here, find a spot to write it. So E, the first one, let's say the mean stays at 53 because one value increased by 5, but the other decreased by 5. So the balance does not change. Okay, and then the second part is asking without doing any calculations, does the MAD for the new data set say the same increase or decrease? So now it's asking about the MAD, um, the variability. So if we go back to our plot here, instead of having 35, we now have 40. And instead of having 70, we now have another 65. So what it does to this, instead our chart's gonna look kinda like that. So it's less spread out. So the MAD is going to change because there's less variability. Everything is a little bit closer to the mean there. Whereas before we were stretching it a little bit more. So yes, the MAD changes, it's going to decrease because everything's getting closer to 53. Let's say um, both data points moved closer 
to the mean. 53. So there is less variability. And the MAD will decrease. And that is the end.